Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to do a quick video um, about uh, about my friend. Well, I mean, I, she's my friend because I bought her books. I never met her in real life, but um, I had a friend named uh, Cynthia who knew that I was um, trying to lose some weight. And she knew I was a marathon runner. But she also knew that I didn't know how to eat because I would I would run and I would eat whatever I wanted, gain weight, and then just run and, and lose all the weight again, but then gain it back. And then run and lose it again and gain it back. And it was a cycle, an ongoing cycle of just gaining weight and losing weight, gaining weight and losing weight. And um, Cynthia, she um, I hired her as a health coach. I hired her for... Um, for about three months, three or four months. She was a wonderful um, uh, health coach, and I thank her. But one thing she turned me on to was uh, Karen Calabrese. Karen Calabrese. This is her book right here. And Karen, uh, what Karen does is she, um, not only does she own a restaurant, several restaurants um, in Chicago, but here, and here's her second book. I will be reviewing both books, just not right now, but I will do a series on both books. What, uh, what Karen uh, has done is not only writing these books, but she is simply amazing. Um, she, um, she gives us her secrets to inner beauty and outer beauty and inner healing. Inner healing is what is the most thing that is important. And that's what I really needed in order to keep the weight off. Um, it's, they say that the work is easy to get it off, but it's harder to keep it off. And that's true. And it's been a lifetime of gaining it and, and losing it and gaining it and losing it for me. But Karen, by reading her books, just showed me how to keep the weight off by eating the right things. When you change what you eat, it helps you, um, wow, it helps heal you. It heals your body. Right now, I'm going through a process where my glasses seem, they don't work anymore because I've changed my eating habits. Um, I've changed my eating habits since, um, since January. It's now July. And not only have I lost a ton of weight, but my eyes are correct. My vision is correcting itself. I'm nearsighted. So I normally have to wear glasses all the time. Now I got to make an appointment at the VA because my glasses, they don't work anymore because I don't, how can I say it? My eyesight is improving because of the food that I'm eating. And the food that you eat, when you learn how to eat, the food that you eat will energize you. It will make you feel more youthful. Um, it will it will sharpen your your memory. Uh, like I say before, a lot of things that I can remember, I can remember as far back as four years old. I'm uh, currently 48 years old now, and some of the memories that I have as a four year old, I can remember them as if they were yesterday. Um, wow! It's just when you change what you eat. It helps you to understand what well, Karen has helped me to understand that this body of mine, this is where I live. And if I truly care about being alive and being able to help others, I have to do the right things today. If I do the right things today, then I'm able to do things like give blood to, um, to a St. Jude's Medical Center. Because my blood is going to be pure. If I do things like drink purified water, a lot of people think that just drinking water is, is okay, but the kind of water you drink is really what um, will affect your body. What purified water is, is uh, purified water. And when I speak uh, to some of these things, what I would like for you to do, if you, um, again, if you don't understand some of the things that I say, when you come to class, make sure that you have make sure you have a pocket dictionary with you. And I know that I have mine. I have my thesaurus here. 
And here's my dictionary. Just a second. Oh, I keep so many books next to me because I like to come to class prepared. Hey, here's a dictionary. But again, purified water. What purified water is, is it's just water that has been, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, all, the, all, the, all the chemicals have been taken out of the water. You know, when you turn on your faucet water, sometimes it'll taste like rust. Or you hear about the, uh, the, um, the, um, the toxic water problem that they're having uh, in Detroit because the pipes are so old. Well, purified water and distilled water, I drink purified water, um, but I cook with distilled water. Distilled water is kind of boiled to where everything is taken out of it. Purified water is a, um, it's kind of, it's, it's a, tw it's a 12 step process, but what it does is it keeps the essential minerals that your body needs, um, in order to, uh, continue to, to, um, in order to continue to replenish your body. So some of the minerals that are in water are good memory, are good minerals to, uh, to consume and, um, distilled water boils all the, the minerals out. So it's good to cook with it, but it's not good to drink with it because you're not giving your body any minerals, but the purified water is going to give your body the minerals that you need. And you do need to drink a certain amount of water a day. They say eight glasses of water a day or two liters of water a day. But it's good to make sure that you replenish and drink water because water is going to keep your skin looking healthy and it's going to keep your skin looking young. So this is why you want to drink purified water and you want to drink about uh, eight glasses a day or uh, two, two liters is what they say, two liters. Anyway, what I'm going to talk about briefly before we go into uh, before we go into the first book we're going to read from Karen. Again, um, the reason I'm making these quick videos uh, about Karen is because I just I went online this morning. Um, this morning is um, is July the 18th. I went online. I normally go online first thing in the morning, uh, and I check my emails. And after I check my emails, I go throughout the day um, I'm looking at the news, or either the um, LA Times or USA Today. And I saw in an article, in a USA Today article, that Karen, her restaurant's going to be closing after 35 years. I couldn't believe this because, again, I've had these books for about, um, wow, I've had them for about a year, but I I cracked them open and I would just do small things, um, not as far as the meal prep, but I would do the small things like, um, like eating more almonds. She recommends that you eat almonds and all kinds of different types of, uh, of nuts. But you eat them for the fat content. She also she also recommends. I mean, you go to the grocery store. Take a look at these labels. Take a look and see what you're eating. Most people, when they go to the grocery store, they just pick stuff up, and I'm guilty of it myself. I would just pick things up without reading what I was eating, and I'm putting things in my body. Just because I ate it before. But now, I don't do that anymore. You have to get smarter. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is live. <laughs> yeah, but you have to get smarter about the things that you put in your body. You just have to do it. Anyway, since I've... Um, the last six months, I, I want to say six, I said since, since the middle of January, I've been preparing my own meals using Karen's cookbooks. And let me tell you, when you prepare your own meals, number one, you know what you're eating because you're preparing it. Number two, you kind of turn yourself into like a Gordon Ramsay. I really love to get in the kitchen. What I love the most about preparing my own meals is 
I love the way my plate looks. Uh, it's called plate preparation. And when your plate looks, when your plate looks pretty, when your plate looks professional, when your plate looks like they looks like they do on MasterChef. If you notice, uh, if you ever watch MasterChef, most of those contestants are normal everyday people like me and you. But what they love to do is they love cooking and cooking has turned into a passion for them. Well, the same has happened for me. Cooking has always been something I enjoy to do. My uh, four sisters, uh, Lisa, Kelly, uh, Tracy, and Leslie, they all taught me how to cook when I was, wow, I'd say at least man, maybe eight years old, nine years old. I'm cooking. You know, I, I had to learn how to come home from school and cook my own foods. So they taught me how to cook simple meals like um, ramen noodles. I knew how to make egg, uh, cook eggs on the stove. I knew how to um, to um, uh, make um, cook oatmeal. I can I can boil my oatmeal. I can boil uh, cream of wheat. Uh, I could cook um, the Kraft macaroni and cheese. Uh, just simple things that had easy directions on the back of the box. And because I was eight years old, I knew how to read. So my sisters would say, you know how to do it. And I didn't know how to do it. So I didn't want to do it. I wanted them to do it. But they were like, no, you do it. So I had to learn how to cook for myself. It ended up being a good thing because um, now I have a passion not only for cooking, but I have a passion for the way that I cut uh, tomatoes, the way that I slice and dice uh, uh, different vegetables and fruits. I bought a very expensive knife set because I wanted to learn how to be good with the cutting board. And I also want to learn how to be better at plate preparation. So these are just some of the small things that Karen is going to show you how to do. Uh, I uploaded her her YouTube uh, page, uh, her YouTube channel. I also connected my YouTube channel with her YouTube channel because I want you to be able to go to her YouTube channel and um, she's going to be doing plate preparation and she's also going to be showing you healthy meals and she's going to be showing you, uh, she's going to be talking to you and giving you uh, healthy information. All of this is just information. Again, this is an educational channel. She's going to be giving you healthy information on how to um, how to improve your um, how to improve your inner healing and how to um, improve your outer beauty. Again, Karen Calabrese, she's amazing. I never met her, but reading both of her books, I feel like she's my best friend. I really do because reading her books have taught me. Not only how to eat, but it's taught me how to live. And to me, she is um, she is so beautiful. Uh, her next birthday coming up, she'll be 70. Come on, look at that. You got to be kidding me, right? 70? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. This is one beautiful woman. I recommend that you learn these secrets. Learn them. Since I've been since I've been eating the right way and uh, I've been running, you know, uh, I, I, I do light workouts. Uh, I do light weightlifting. Um, I know I don't belong to a gym. I do everything that I need to do at home. I do push ups, sit ups, um, and just you know, in, you know, control what I'm eating. Uh, I run maybe a mile a morning, uh, at least four times a week, sometimes more, but in order to get the benefits from what Karen is is teaching, all we really need to do is mild, you know, exercise maybe three times a week and change what you eat. Uh, and everybody knows pretty much what to cut out. Fatty foods. You can cut out your fatty foods and greasy foods and replace them by eating healthy fats. This is considered a healthy fat. Okay. Also, look right there. Start looking for labels that you see that sign. Okay? When you see this sign right here, it's going to help you. Okay? Also, at the top, protein. See at the top? Six grams. Six grams. 
Wherever you see that G, it's going to help you. Wherever you see that, it's going to help you. It's going to be better for you. All right. So, enough about Karen for right now, for the rest of this video. What we're going to talk about for the rest of this video um, is going to be creating a healthy habit. And before we start, I always like to start with the serenity prayer. The reason I like to start with the serenity prayer is because um, it helps to humble me. And I'm hoping that whoever is watching these videos will kind of learn um, another healthy habit of um, accepting things. Acceptance is the key to, uh, to seizing the day. If you can accept who you are, you can get out there and you can seize the day. That means that you can take control of the day. The day can be yours. You can live a positive day all day. When negativity rolls up on you, then you already know that you've accepted this day and you push that negativity away. You bring in all the positivity. You bring in all of the light. And that's what's going to help you not only to have a great day, but when you start stacking great days right behind each other, there is really nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't do. So we're going to begin again with the serenity prayer. Moment of silence first uh, for the alcoholic who still suffers. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's very important right there, the wisdom to know the difference. Okay, now, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about creating a habit. Not only creating a habit, but we're going to talk about creating a healthy habit. Now, in order to create a habit, I was talking to my daughter. What? Well, with teenagers, you text with them. <laughs> so I was texting with my daughter this morning. And my daughter, she's an amazing young lady. 19. Um, excuse me, 20. She's 20 years old. No, she'll be 20 in November. I'm sorry, Amara. She'll be 20 in November. It's my baby. But... She is going through um, what a lot of young uh, young people her age are going through. She's working um, this summer and she's preparing for uh, for school, which I'm preparing for school as well. Um, um, you know, school's coming up quick, and because I'm a substitute teacher, I've got to get ready to um, I've got to prepare to get back in the classroom. Well, she's preparing to get back in the classroom as a student, and I'm very proud of her. I think she's an amazing young lady. Uh, but one thing that we all know is very difficult to do is juggle um, school and work because of the time constraints. Now, I did um, myself. I went to college and uh, worked a full-time job at the same time. Um, it was very difficult to do. Um but one thing that I learned, and one thing that helped me to do it, this is what I um, this is what I text to my daughter this morning, is what I have to do is number one, I have to visualize myself um, not only going to work and completing a full day of work, but coming back home, getting some rest, um, and then going to school, because I I, I went to school during the day. And I work graveyard. So my swing shift is when I pretty much got a chance to rest. Um, and my study time. So what I would do is I would combine eight hours at school. Whether I had eight hours at school or not, I was going to do eight hours at school. Because you've got to get your, your library time in. If you're a student and you're not spending time in the library, you're not going to do well. I'm letting you know now. However many units you have, if you have, if you take one class and you have, you take one class and you, let's say you have, um, wow, let's say you have one class and that class is five units. Well, that class is going to require you to spend an hour in the library. Um, I'd say per, for me, it would be per day, but for most people, it would be per class period. 
So if you got that class twice a week, then that would require at least two hours in the library of study, at least. I'm the type of studier where I got to pound the information in my head. So I would have to be there um, five days a week. That's just for me, uh, for that one class. If it's five, if it's a, a five unit class, um, I would suggest however many units you have, that's how many hours you need to spend at least per week in the library. You've got to fall in love with books. You have to fall in love with reading. You have to fall in love with studying. And you have to visualize yourself doing that, okay? Another thing that I learned um, by visualizing is my, again, my uh, sister Lisa, she's an angel. Um, when I was six years old, she took me to see the movie Rocky. And when I was six, my uh, Rocky was my favorite movie, and it's still one of my favorite movies today. And what was what I really loved about that movie is I loved Rocky's preparation. Rocky would write things on post-it notes. And he would put it on his mirror. And the people that he wanted to please, he wanted to please his mother and father. His mother and father had passed. He had a picture of his mom and dad on his mirror when he would get ready in the morning. That's called visualizing. You want to visualize what it is that you want to do. Okay? Once you take the time to visualize that, then you want to, that's number one. Number two is you want to find the way to be successful. That is, what's your motivation with Rocky, his motivation was his parents on the wall. Rocky didn't want to be a loser. That's what I liked about The Rock. Rock, oh, that's my guy. That's my movie. But Rocky, he didn't want to be a loser. But he wasn't that smart of a dude. But one thing he was smart enough to do was, he was smart enough to get him a girl who was smart, Adrian. Adrian was smart. I, was, I always wanted me an Adrian. I still don't have an Adrian. But to me, that was the best part of the movie. Uh, at the end, when he was calling for his girl. He didn't care about nothing else around him. That was the great part. He didn't care about the announcers. He didn't care about the crowd. Everybody was going crazy. Apollo Creed was in the ring celebrating. That part was cool too. <laughs> but for me, the best part was when he was calling for his girl. Because he tuned out everything. And all he wanted was his girl. And when his girl rolled up in the ring, he looked at his girl. He told his girl he loved her. His girl looked at him. And said, I love you too. And they both hugged. At six years old, that was just incredible for me. I was like, I got to find my Adrian. I still have not Well, I'll put it this way. My Adrian is my higher power. <laughs> That's my Adrian today. So, I guess I have found my Adrian. Anyway, find your motivation. Okay? Your motivation could be you want a better job. It could be your kids. It could be anything. Your motivation could be your higher power. Your motivation could be graduation day. Yeah. But find your motivation. Two, keep it in a place where you can visually see it. With the rock, with Rocky, the place was that mirror. And that's where I suggest you put whatever your motivation is, you put it on that mirror. I told my daughter, and this is what I did. I wrote the word focus, F-O-C-U-S, focus. On a post-it note. And I took that post-it note and I put it on my mirror. And every morning when I was getting ready or shave and whatever, you know, then I come back in my living room, in, in my in my room, in my uh, uh, in my room, and on my dresser, my dresser mirror, not the mirror, not the mirror in the in the bathroom. The mirror in the bathroom, when you take a shower, it can get wet. So you don't put it in the bathroom. You put it in either your room or in the kitchen. You put it somewhere where you can see it on the refrigerator. But you take that post-it note and you put it somewhere where you can see it every day. That way, when you look at it, for me, mine says focus. So when I looked at that focus, uh, that post-it note, it let me know every morning I got to get my mind ready. I got to get my mind in the mindset of doing what I said I wanted to do. So you can lie to other people all day, but you can't lie to yourself. You can try, but it ain't going to work. I guarantee you. And you look in the mirror, guess who's looking right back at you? Guess. Take one guess. You. So if you lie to yourself, what kind of person are you? You're a person that needs to change. You need to change if you lie to yourself all the time. So you put that post it up. And, and trust me, anybody can change. And you don't have to lie to yourself. If you lied to yourself in the past, today's the day that you stop lying to yourself. Today is the day you stop lying to yourself. All right. Now, then you make a plan. 
And making a plan is the easiest thing to do. It really is. Because once you make a plan, then you can stick to it. Like I said before, my plan was the hours that I needed to work, I was at work. And those hours are set. That was a graveyard shift. So those hours are set. The school time, you may have three hours of school, three total hours of school in a day. If you're going to a junior college, I went to uh, Compton College. Then I transferred and I, uh, I graduated at uh, Harbor College in Harbor City. But the majority of my credits, I did them at Compton College. The reason why was because uh, Compton College at the time was going through a reaccreditation and they lost their accreditation. When they lost accreditation, I didn't know if I was going to lose my credits or not. So I transferred to, um, to Harbor. And, uh, but I ran track at Compton College and I got some a couple of records up there too. One is a 1500 meter record. That's never going to be broken because the college isn't there anymore. So I'm looking at a, a, a record holder and my record is never going to be broken. Compton legend. Anyway, after you make your plan, I mean, I don't know what your plan is, but you make it. You make your plan. After you make your plan, then you share your plan with your friends. Tell your friends and your family what you're trying to do. If it's you're trying to lose weight, hey, I'm trying to lose weight. If it's going to college, hey, I'm trying to go to college. If it's um, I'll meet you a, 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 new, uh, a, a new mate, Hey, I'm trying to, you know, I'm out there, I'm in a dating scene. If it's getting a new job, you know, you got to speak it into existence. When you live the power of, of a positive life and when you push negativity away from you, it's like a magnet. When you push negativity away from you, negativity has to go. When your po positive energy only attracts positive energy, negative energy, uh, negative energy attracts negative energy. That's just the law of nature. So you want to push that negativity away from you. You want to bring that positivity and that light into your life. And that's what's so incredible about this process, about the AA process. This process is it, it's not just about drinking. It's about changing your mindset. And you can apply, you can take alcohol out and put anything in there that you want. You can put in, um, uh, wow, if you watch too much TV, you can put in, uh, if you can't stop your mind from racing, you can put in, uh, if you have poor study habits, you can put in, um, wow, pretty much any negative thing that you want. You take alcohol out and you put in whatever it is that you need help with. And I guarantee you that this AA process will help you to grow. Now, once you share everything with your friends that you're talking about, the next thing you need to do is you need to reward yourself for every little accomplishment. Every little accomplishment you reward yourself, for instance, if you tell yourself that you're going to stop eating fried foods, you don't have to stop eating fried foods totally. At the end of the week, go to KFC. At the end of the week, though. And, but throughout the week, don't eat no greasy foods. Just throughout the week, no greasy foods. At the end of the week, reward yourself. You're going to eventually see and if you can cut out greasy foods, just that one thing, if you can cut out greasy foods, and in one week you're going to see results. You cut out greasy foods, start drinking purified water, not the water out the tap, because that water out the tap got all kind of nasty chemicals in it. You don't know what's been in that rusty water. So that means you got to start. You got to uh, you got to start investing a little bit of money into your into into buying healthy water. Buying healthy water. Um, it doesn't get expensive if you look at what you're cutting out. If you cut out the greasy foods and all, and, and, and the potato chips and ice cream, if you cut that stuff out, you can spend that money on buying health, things that are healthy for you. Once you start eating things that are healthy for you, your body's going to get used to it. When your body gets used to, uh, to running on healthy fuel, it's just like your car running on the right type of gas. When you put the wrong type of gas in your car, what's going to happen? Eventually, that engine is going to, going to just cut off. It's going to stop running. You're going to be stuck in the middle of the street somewhere because you're putting gas in that it's, it's not the right octane gas. Your body's like a Mercedes Benz. You've got to put in the best kind of gas in your body. And if you don't do that, then, you know, it's going to eventually cut out on you. And... What we do here today is we put out positive information. 
We put out positive information that's going to help people to grow. And that's what we want to do today. We, we, we're, you know, we're helping people grow today. I'm giving back what was so freely given to me. These books, the information that Cynthia shared with me, I mean, true, I did have to hire her. But if you need to hire a life coach, go on and do that, you know. And you don't have to hire a life coach forever. I think I had Cynthia for maybe three months, anywhere from three to four months. But she was an amazing life coach. And the things that she told me, I didn't immediately implement them, but they stay in here. See, when someone puts something in your brain, it's in there and you might not use it immediately, but one day you're going to look and say, hey, this is something I need to do. So in closing, I'm going to start with cleansing with Karen. That's going to be what we do next. And um, wow, I thank Karen for, wow, for 35 years of of giving of giving lessons on how to live healthy and on how to live this woman is literally wow she's literally she's literally extending the lives of people people who have diseases people with diabetes people who uh, people who think that they that 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 they that that they have a disease and 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 that disease can't be cured. Well, Karen is going to show you how to heal yourself just by eating. I love her for that today. Thank you, Karen. And um, as we always do, we're going to end with the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Till next time, thank you. Peace and blessings.